Good morning, Prophet. Good morning again, Apostle. And good morning to everybody, and welcome to Healing School this morning. Now, again, Healing School is a place where you can come to hear and be healed. Hear and be healed. Okay? So let's have a word of prayer, and we'll go ahead and get into the teaching for this morning in this class. Father, we praise you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Now we look to you, and we believe you today, and we receive your word. To receive your words, to receive your healing. To receive your words, to receive your power. We don't have to leave this class this morning like we came. In the name of Jesus. We create and declare the sick unhealed in Jesus' name. And we thank you. We praise you for it in advance in Jesus' name. Now, people are believing right now. They come to hear and to be healed. So they're believing. They are thanking you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. This morning... We are talking about steps of faith. Steps of faith this morning. There are some things here we can learn in this lesson for healing. Because it all everything starts with what? With faith. Everything. There is nothing that God does separate and apart from his faith. And he required that we have faith. Okay, so as we start this class this morning, grab your pen and paper and get ready to take some real good notes. Write down your questions. We'll answer them at the end, okay, as always. All right, Prophet. Our opening scripture this morning is coming from Romans chapter 1. Verses 16 and 17 in the King James. And Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30 in the message. Romans 1, Romans 1, 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Matthew Amen. 11, verses 28 through 30, in the message says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Oh, God. You will learn to live freely and lightly. Notice what he said. I won't put anything heavy on you. How many of y'all know sickness and disease is little pieces of debt? That's heavy. But God said he won't put that up on you. Pay attention to words now. He will not put that up on you. Now, the devil wants you to think that God made you sick. See, the devil will slap you 
And when you turn your head that way where the slap come from, the devil print his his other his, his his finger at God. He wants you to believe God did this to you. And then he'll whip out his little chart, flipping pages. Would you believe God did this to you? Would you believe God put that on you? But God does not do that. Are you getting this? Steps of faith. Okay? You're going to have to act on the word. You can't just believe. You must act. Many times we minister to people and we'll say, now do something you could not do before. What are we saying? Act on the word. Act on it. And you know what they find out? That their healing is right there. There it is. That's why Jesus said, by his stripes, you were healed. He done, He have done it already. All right. Praise God. While we're talking about steps of faith this morning, and there are three steps that faith takes to receive from God and to become a partaker of what we possess. Mm -hmm. Three steps. So we're going to look at those three steps this morning. Step number one, faith hears from God. That's the only basis for faith, and that is knowing what God said to you, not to someone else, knowing what God said to you. So step number one, faith hears from God. Yes. Step number two, faith meditates. On the word of God. Mm -hmm. Faith meditates on God's word. That's how you build in you what God says to you. That's how you turn the impossible into the possible in your own thinking. Meditation is part of renewing of the mind. Yeah. To think like God thinks. I'll say it again. Step number two is faith meditates on God's word. And that's how you build into yourself what God has said to you. You meditate on it. That's how you turn the impossible into the possible in your own thinking. And then finally, meditation is the part of renewing the mind so that you can think like God thinks. That's right. So step, step number two is faith meditate on the word. And then the last step, step number three, faith acts on the word. Faith acts on the word. Confessing the word is a part of acting on the word. Standing on the word in the face of opposition and being unswayed by circumstances is a part of acting on God's word. That's right. He praises. It's praises, which is also acting on God's word. I'm going to repeat verse, I'm sorry, step number three again. Step number three, faith acts on the word. So confessing the word is a part of acting on the word. So when we are confessing what God says, we are acting on the word. Mm -hmm. Standing on the word in the face of opposition and bringing un and being, I'm sorry, unswayed by circumstances is also a part of acting on the word. And then That's finally, right. faith praises. Faith will yeah. praise God, which is one of the biggest actions that we can have. 
Absolutely. as it relates to acting on the word of God. I'm going to repeat yeah. those three steps. Step number one, faith hears the word from God. Step number two, faith meditates on God's word. And step number three, faith acts on the word. Let, let's pause right there for a second. Kim. Number two, faith meditates on the word. Now, when we say meditate, we're not talking about this Middle Eastern, uh, what they call meditation. That's not meditation at all. That's opening yourself up to demon spirits. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That's what that is. But notice, the word of God is specific. Meditate where? On the word of God day and night. Then you will make your own way prosperous and you will have good success. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Okay? Medi meditating on the word of God is the missing ingredient to faith. When you meditate on the word of God, you are also building faith. Faith coming how? By hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And you keep on hearing that word of God. As we said, we said it this morning. As we begin to start. We say it every week. Healing tool is a place where people come to what? To hear. See, faith coming by hearing. It's a place where people come to hear and to be healed. Now, when you meditate in the word, you are saying it over and over again. You're thinking about it. You're speaking it over and over again. Until faith comes. Faith come by how? Hearing. You are painting an image on the inside of you. You are seeing yourself totally healed. You are seeing yourself set free. You are delivered. See? And this is why he say meditate in his what? In his word. Day and night. That you may observe. So you're going to see some things. You're going to be observing some things as you meditate the word of God. That you may observe to do. That you may observe to do what he said. And then you will make your way prosperous. So you're going to make your own way prosperous. And then God says, then I'm going to give you good Success. He didn't say bad success. He didn't say one of these old days. Then I will, then I will give you good success. Well, the good news is he have done it. You need to receive it. Okay? All right, Prophet. Praise God. Well, as we pointed out, the three steps of faith, let's just go deeper into looking at some explanations and uh, see if we can pull out some key points here. One of the things we have to be careful about is uh, we've heard the three steps of faith. We got them rooted and grounded in our hearts by now. We hear from God, faith hears the word, faith meditates the word, and then it acts on the word. But one yes. of the things we want to point out is if we're not careful, we can get rooted in only that first step. We can get rooted there. A lot of people just get rooted there and this, you know, what is that step number one? You know, it's just hearing the word and confessing the word. So we think that once we've made, you know, once we make uh, all the steps necessary to receive, all we have to do is just sit back. We can get rooted in only one, one step and not mm -hmm. make all the steps necessary. Some people think, well, once I've made a list of confessing, a list of the word, and I confess them, then my part is done. 
They think that, yeah. you know, they have confessed the word over their knees. That is all they need to do. So they sit back and they wait on God to do the rest. But we have to be very careful. Others sit back and wait for money to cut, to just show up. Well, I prayed. I made the fake confession. So all I'm going to do is just sit and wait for it to show up. Mm-hmm. They're, they're waiting for someone to hand them the money. If it doesn't show up, they keep waiting. And then much time passes and nothing changes. All the while, they think they're in faith. Absolutely. So they keep waiting, they keep waiting, and they keep waiting, and they keep waiting, and nothing happens. But faith is a work. You got to remember that faith is a work. Faith yes. is a work. And faith is an act. We have to remember that. Faith is a work, and it's an act. So faith is an action that we take. And we can look at James 2 and and 17, amen, if you want to go further into that. But you must act in, you must put your faith in action because faith can be seen. You must put it in motion. It can be seen. So we're not Mm going to just be sitting around twiddling our thumbs and keep saying, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to move, and we're going to do what God is telling us to do. Amen? We're going to go deeper. As Apostle likes to say, we're going to go deeper into the things of God. James chapter 2 and verse 17, looking at it in the Amplified, it says, So also faith, if it does not have work, deeds, and actions of obedience, to back it up by itself is dispute. It is destitute of power and operative. It's there. Mm-hmm. That's James chapter 2, verse 17 in the Amplified. See, faith, if it does not have work, so we know it, most of us remember that from the King James. If it had not worked, it's dead, what? Being alone. Faith without work. So we we can't just sit around twiddling our thumbs, waiting for someone to just drop money in our hands or in our bank account, not saying that that could not happen because we also know the Bible says, with God, all things are possible to them that believe. But we're talking about the steps of faith this morning. That's right. We're talking about how to put your faith to work. And if we are actually going to put our faith to work, then we must stay rooted and grounded in those steps. Faith, first of all, here's the word. Amen. Faith hears from God. So that that means you've gotten into the scriptures. You dug through the Bible and found out what you need to hear from God for your situation. And then you're going to take that word that you have, God has given you, and you're going to meditate that step too. You're going to, re- re- you're going to read it again and again and again. You're going to mutter it. That means just whisper to yourself softly. And then you're going to go back and revisit it again and meditate. That means think on it. That means renew it in your, renew your mind with it. If it's something that you have not been doing, then you say, well, okay, well, I have to change my thinking on that. Yeah. Yeah. That's meditation. And then, of course, the final the final step is to act on what you've been meditating on. You've been meditating on God wants me to forgive. Love covers. That's what love is. The Bible says love pays no attention to a suffered wrong. And if you find yourself that you've been paying attention to everything, every little thing that someone said about you or someone who hurt you 50 years ago or someone who hurt you yesterday and you can't sleep for thinking about it. See, now you must what? Act on what God said. What did he say about that? He said, pray for those people who wrongfully misused and abused you. You want to find that? Go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4, up around verse 42, 3, 44. He's telling you the steps to take when someone hurts you. God doesn't want you to hold that in your heart and just keep thinking about that. That's going to hinder your your prayers being Mm -hmm. answered. That's going to hinder the money from coming to you. 
that's going to hinder everything. It's, it's everything has come to a, a screeching halt, and you don't know why. Well, unforgiveness is there. You see? So you found that that unforgiveness is there through meditating on the word of God. What do I do when people hurt? I'm just using that as an example. Well, now you're mm-hmm. going to act in faith, and you're going to correct that. Acting on the word, that's step three. Well, what am I going to do now? I'm going to do what Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, 44 says. I'm going to forgive that, that person. Now you're acting on the word. Now you're acting your faith. You're acting on the word. And that's faith. That's the step right there. That's good. So we have to make sure that we are not just sitting there stuck on, on <laughs> stuck right there in in first the first step we cannot say that we can't stay there so your part is not done until you've taken that final step we can't sit back and wait for someone to just drop the money in our hand no we're going to do everything that god is telling us to do about when since we say we're waiting for god to drop money well guess what you can wait after you've done the step of giving and Receiving what what is that? Giving I what give I'm asking God for money, you tell me now I need to give, now you need to plant a seed. Mm-hmm. And then you just like you do in the natural. You want some corn? Well you're gonna plant a seed. Not apple seeds, not banana seeds or whatever bananas grow on trees, I know, but I'm just saying you must plant the seed of whatever it is you want. You want money, so so some money into something. Yeah. Now you can wait for it to come back to you. Hello? After you've taken that step, now you can wait. You just, now you're praising. Because we looked at even in step three, praising God is acting in faith. That's letting God know. Even though it may be delayed, I'm still praising you because I already know. I've sown a seed into the ground uh, where you told me to sow it. I'm a tither. I'm an offering giver. So you can't just say, I want some money, and I'm just going to sit on the porch and wait till it comes. Have you done what God requires to do in his word? So we got to make sure we don't get caught up into that. Just sure. taking the first step and getting stuck there. So confession sure. is important, but faith mm-hmm. does confess the word, but there are other steps that faith. Faith is an act, as we've been talking about, and confessing the word is not the totality of faith. Action must be joined to our confession, as we just read in James chapter 2. At one point, God, you know, he, he speaks to us and he tells us so many things to do, but, but then we have to make sure we get up off the couch and go and do them. That's right. So this is a testimony, we shared this already, and I'm going to share it again, uh, of a mother who was attending a service of a guest minister at her church. When they received an offering for this minister, the Spirit of God directed this woman to give $1,000 in the offering. She didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. But she put an envelope in the offering and wrote on it, I pledge to send the money to this minister within 30 days. And she put $1,000 as the offer. Well, you're not going to do something like that unless you show you heard from God. So that's what we're talking about. See, she the first step was she heard from God. And she got the word of what God was telling her to do. She didn't say, well, Lord, I can't do this because I don't have the money. First of all, you got to recognize if it's God telling you to do something, when the minute he said it to you, he already equipped you to do it. That's good. I want to say that again. If God tells you to do anything, he's already given you the abilities and, and he's, he's equipped you to do it. You have the ability. Right. You have every, mm-hmm. the resources. You may not see it like she didn't see a thousand dollars, but she knew she heard a word from God. And when you know God has given you something to do, you also need to know that he's going to make a way for you to do it. But you got to trust him. See, this is faith. So she began to act. She didn't have the money. So the first action she made was to seek God on what she was to do. Well, God, where am I? I'm not going to get the money. Where am I going to get it from? I heard from Mm -hmm. you to give it. But where am I going to get it from? Now, remember, faith 
without action is dead. So she's praying. And just because we have heard one instruction from God doesn't mean that we have heard all we need to know about it. The first thing she heard was give the money. That doesn't mean she's heard all she needs to know about it. Are you listening to me? That's right. So she made a pledge at the leading of the Holy Spirit that she didn't just sit and try to confess the money in. She went home and made to speak God about her part, her part, her part. She had made the pledge, but what was she to do to what? To return, to make sure that pledge was good. She needed to go further. As she was seeking God, her mind, she remembered she had made some barrettes and decorated them as gifts and gave them to her friends for Christmas. She, and she was impressed to make more to sell, and so she did. She asked her friend who owned a boutique if she could set up a table in her store and sell them the next weekend, and her friend agreed. Yes. And so that following Saturday, she had her table all set up with the book uh, in the boutique, and within 30 minutes, a woman walked up to her table and picked up each one of the 25 different kinds of barrettes and it, and it began to examine them thoroughly. She asked the mm-hmm. single she asked the single mom, Did you make these? Yes, ma'am, she answered. I'll wait till we get settled. Go go ahead. She asked the single mom, Did you make these? Yes, ma'am, she replied. And the and then the guest said, Well, I'll take fifty thousand of them. This woman was a buyer for a nationwide luxury department store. Wow. Mm-hmm. Look at look at God. Amen. Now this praise God. This thing not only had her one thousand dollars to meet her pledge, she also had what? A new business. God gave her a divine idea. And when mm-hmm. and when she implemented the idea, an open door of financial opportunities was open to her as well. Praise she not God. only gave her the seed to sow, but bread to eat. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Amen. He supplied the need. And do you know? Did you notice the pro- the process, the pro- the progression? She prayed to God. She didn't just say, "Well, God, I don't have the money," and throw up her hands. Oh, she didn't just say, well, you told me to do this, so I'm going to wait till you supply it and sit at home and twiddle my thumb and just say, well, it's not here yet, so I guess we can't give it. No, she also sought God further about how to get the money. You see, mm-hmm. just because he's given us one instruction, one word, doesn't mean he will not give you another. That's right. So we have to remember God will answer our prayers. Amen. That's right. So she, she, she didn't stop. She took time to seek God, and God gave her the answer. Praise God. Now, notice notice that she took time to what? To seek God. She took the time to find out what is my part? Is it something you want me to do? And there was. But suppose she had never taken the time to seek the Lord about it. She wouldn't have never had the testimony that she ended up having. He told her to make borax. See? And look what happened. He blessed it. He multiplied it. Can y'all see that? Amen. Amen. And it's the same thing with your healing. You've got to seek God. See? You need again, you need to hear this word over and over and over some more, and then over and over some more. Meditate this word. Look what he said. You will make your own way what? Prosperous. 
And he said, he'll give you what? Good success. Good success is you, you are totally made whole. You are healed. The spirit of the Lord has visited you. Correcting everything in your body or uh, wherever it is. Listen. He corrects it. Remember the scripture? Even God, Romans 4 and 17, even God who quickened the dead and call it those things which be not as though they were. He Listen, where healing is not, call for it. Yeah, call for it. Don't you he'll, he'll answer you. He'll show you. Like he showed this young lady. He showed her exactly what to do. He'll show you too what to do. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, we've given some demonstrations in some examples, rather, as it relates to money. You know, we talked about not just sitting on the porch waiting for the money to just come and drop in our hands. Mm -hmm. This is healing school this morning, so let's go into giving some examples with our healing. You've heard them time and time again, but we we don't want to uh, just leave uh, the line today, healing school today, without giving that same example as it relates to our healing. So you say, well, what do I do with my healing? Well, you know, it works the same way. We find the scriptures on healing, but then again, we don't just stop at finding the scriptures. We have to take all the three steps that we talked about earlier when it comes to our healing. We have we must hear from God. We must hear what he said. That's step one. What does God say about my healing? And so we find that scripture. And then we step two, we meditate on what God said about our healing. And then we act on what God said about our healing. That's the three steps. So let's take an example, take a scripture, for example. What did God say about our healing? Mm -hmm. Amen. There are many healing scriptures. Choose one of us. Give us a healing scripture. James, James chapter five. Anybody remember that? James chapter five. And I think you can pick it up in verse 13 to 14. Is there any sick amongst you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, to about you the sick, anointing them with what? Earl in the name of the Lord. Now, the Earl is only a point of contact. That's all it is. So you to release your faith. It's the same thing with the woman who had the issue of blood. If I could just touch his clothes. So you are saying, when I'm anointed with the Earl, the same thing. I'm made whole. Okay? It's a place to release your faith. So anointing them with Earl in the name of the Lord. Notice, in the name of the Lord. In the prayer of faith, not the prayer of Lord, if it be your will, that's not faith. Faith knows the will of God. The will of God is to heal every time. That's God's will. And if you receive it, that's what you will have. So the prayer of faith was save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. Watch this. And, and conjunction, if they have committed sins, it will be forgiven them. Isn't that powerful? The same prayer to get you healed is the same one that saved you. And if they committed sins, it'll be forgiven them. Do y'all see that? The same one? Not a different one, the same one. Go ahead, prophet. Amen. That's very good. That is a scripture that we can definitely stand on as it relates to our healing. So let's, let's, let's examine it closely. 
because you heard that's that's applied the three steps to the scripture. Apostle, so you said, if there are any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. And if you choose to go that route with that scripture, let's apply those three steps. All First right. of all, you're going to hear the scripture. You're going to hear what God said about it. And and we're talking about faith now. So you, you have to approach God's word with what? Faith. Believing that it is the word of God. It is the inspired word of God. And it is for you because you are a Christian. And then then once you hear that word. That that as you call for the and and they'll pray over you. Well, whatever prayer you now, I, I, Apostle chose that. He he, you know, we got to work a little bit with this one because it's not as plain and cut and dry as First Peter two twenty four, where I'm going to go next. But this scripture here says you you call for them and they're going to pray the prayer of faith over you, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Now, and the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is you call someone and they pray over you and they pray, Lord, if it be your will, heal so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Well, see, now that's not a prayer of faith. No. That is not a prayer of faith. This is why you have to be very careful with who you ask to pray for you. That's right. That person might love you with all their heart. That person might be mom, dad, sister, brother, cousin, uncle, niece, nephew. It doesn't matter. They love you, but they don't know the prayer of faith. See, that scripture that Apostle chose said they're going to pray the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Uh, The prayer of faith. That's good. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. Well, what is the prayer of faith? It is not if it be. The prayer of faith no, never has an if in it. Well, he chose that, so I have to deal with that. The prayer of faith never, ever has an if it be your will. Why? Never. Because we know we know the will of God where healing is concerned. Yes, we do. Yeah. So I could be here forever, but I don't have a lot of time. So I'll just mention that to you. And if that person really does pray the prayer of faith over you, then your job is to what? Believe it, meditate on it, and then act on whatever prayer they pray over you. Yeah, receive that. But but, but how can you how can you pray how can you act on, Father, if it be your will to heal me, then heal me. How can you act on that? <laughs> you can't. How can you act? How can you act on that? You cannot act. There's no faith in if. Somebody said, well, Jesus prayed that. Yes, he did. But you have to really examine why he prayed that and where he prayed it and why he prayed it. That was not the prayer of faith. He was, that's the prayer of what? What is that the prayer of? See, that's not the prayer of faith. That's the prayer of what? Petitioning God. That's the prayer of petitioning God to, to, to let his will be done. That's why Jesus prayed that. He was put that's the prayer. See, we don't know what these prayers are, and so we just pray anything. But now the mm-hmm. prayer of faith, the prayer of faith is going to pray what God has already said about the situation, not trying to find out what he's saying, like Jesus said, if it be your will. Are you listening to me? He was petitioning that's God right. for something. He wanted to know the will of God. But where the will of God is already known, you don't have to petition God and, or, and ask God what his will is. If you know his will is all, see, the Bible says the word of God is the will of God. His word yeah. is his will. And his will is his word. They're not, into, they're not going to change at any time. Child of God, you have to get that now. <laughs> now let's go to First Peter 2.24. Now you're going to see the will of God about your healing. And it says in First Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins. And who is his own self? We're talking about Jesus. Who his own self, Jesus Christ, bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we, that's talking about you and me, 
being dead to sin, we are dead to sin. We live unto what? Righteousness by his, by whose? Who is is the spirit referring to? By whose? Jesus. So by Jesus' stripes, watch that verb there. Going to be healed, you were. War is not present tense. It is not future tense. It is it is past tense. Yes. So what am I saying? This is the will of God for your healing. Jesus shed his blood for you on that cross. You were healed by the strike on his back and the blood that he shed. You were healed. That's what he went to the cross for. Mm-hmm. To, to, to save you from a, 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 a sinful world of existence when you're living and now you're living and living and living and you're going to hell when you die. No, he saved that. That's salvation. And then there are three things that he died to provide on that cause. We talk about salvation a lot, but it's also for not just your salvation, but for your deliverance and for your healing, for your prosperity. That's good. Are you listening to me? And if you don't know what's in the package, when you go to the reading of the will, you're not going to be. But I want you to expect your healing. I want you to know that he provided for you your healing. So you should get to the place and point in your life where you say, I refuse to live another day in this world going without what Jesus died to provide for me. And what was that? He died to provide your healing. I am not trying to say that you don't have an attack in your body. See, that's a fact that it is there. But I'll I'll show you a truth. It has no The truth is that it is the cancer is there. But the the I mean the fact is that it is there, but the truth is it has no right to be there because of what Jesus that's good. Gives. That's good. And you steal from everyone who does not know what rightfully belong to them. So you now are meditating on First Peter 2, 24. By his stripes, I was healed. Well, if I was healed, that means I'm healed today. See, so you're meditating and you're meditating and you're meditating. Well, that means I'm healed today. Well, you know what? I'm going to start step through. Oh, my God. See it? You can do that. What do you mean acting like I'm healed? Just keep meditating that word, putting it in. Remember we talked about the lady with the cancer? She said she kept confessing the word, kept meditating the word, kept acting on the word, saying that she was healed, saying that she was healed, saying the scripture over and over every day in the morning at lunchtime before she went to bed at night. Anybody asked her how she felt? She said, I feel good. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm filled with the spirit of God. My body is healed and made whole, even though the pain was still there. Even though it was still there, but that lady was acting on her face. She was acting. She didn't just sit around. She said it one time. No, that was not the way. So you get hold of this scripture right here, and then you meditate it, and then you say it in the morning, and you say it at lunch, or you go to bed. You acting, and you will never again say what you feel. Not by your sight, not by your feeling. But you're going to get up. My father in the gospel said after he had received that word and he heard God give him that word, he knew God gave him that word, and he's laying in bed. Then God came back months later. He's still laying and He said, well, what would a healed man be doing? Now, this man is paralyzed from the waist down. And now he said, well, you, you confessed the word a month ago. You've been meditating on it every day for a month now. And now you're acting on it, saying that you're healed. Well, I'm glad you're acting on it, saying that you're healed. But, son, what would a healed person be doing? That's good. So now you're paralyzed. What you going to do? You can't move your legs. What you going to do? All right. So he's thinking about this and thinking about this. And finally he said, you know what I'm going to do? If I'm healed, I'm getting up out of this bed. And if you said what, if you meant what you said, you said that, that I, you know, if I just act on my faith and believe that and receive it, well, guess what? I'm about to do it. He threw himself off the bed. He pulled himself up by his hands on the post of the bed, the bedpost. It was his upper 
upper extremities were strong, but it's just his legs were paralyzed. So he begins to pull himself and put himself on the floor. Now that's an action, wouldn't you say? That's now before right. he couldn't move, couldn't move. That's good. But when he took an act of faith, here's what happened. He said, "You know how those, you know, when when there's no no feeling in your body, you know, the, the doctor used to stick him with a pin. He couldn't even feel it. But when he threw himself on that floor, he said it looked like millions of stick pins was just sticking in his leg. He said it hurt so bad, but it was, he would cry. But if it, if it wasn't so good, it was bad in the pain side of it. But it was good in the fact that I could feel that. I could feel that. And then all of a sudden, he was, it was like somebody just poured something over his head and it worked its way all the way down to his leg. And now he's standing straight up, straight up, straight up on his leg and went in the bathroom and got dressed and walked into the living room and joined his family. And they all were like, you can't, but they couldn't believe what they were seeing. All right. Are you listening Praise to me? God. That's acting on the word of God. So you may not do, be doing that today, but you know what? Like I said, months after he could still laying in bed, Jesus knew he had to get him up. What are you doing? What are you doing? What is it you do? He did. And when the doctors asked her, well, we don't see the cancer. Where did it go? She said, I guess I pushed it out. I put so much word in there. I guess there was no more room in there for it. See, that's, that's your right. step of faith right now. That's, that's your right. step of faith. Yeah. Are you listening? That is your step of faith. Keep trusting God. Well, amen. Keep praising God. Keep believing the word. Amen.